bunch of signs and wonders and miracles following him these days. So I'm in for that, right? Are you? I just want to, my name is Sandy. I'm part of the leadership team here at SRC. So thank you for coming. And if you're watching us online, thanks for joining us. We welcome you. So I'd like to start out tonight with a scripture from the Passion Translation, of course. It is what they read in heaven, right? <laughs> I'm in uh, Hebrews chapter 10. And now we are brothers and sisters in God's family because of the blood of Jesus. And he welcomes us to come right into the most holy sanctuary in the heavenly realm, boldly with no hesitation. For he has dedicated a new life-giving way for us to approach God. For just as the veil was torn in two, Jesus' body was torn open to give us free and fresh access to him. And since we now have a magnificent king priest to welcome us into God's house, we come closer to God and approach him with an open heart, fully convinced by faith that nothing will keep us at a distance from him. For our hearts have been sprinkled with blood to remove impurity, and we have been freed from an accusing conscience, and now we are clean, unstained, and presentable to God inside and out. Amen? All right, well, why don't we stand up and just uh, lean into that word? Father, we just believe your word tonight. We believe your word. And so we just come tonight. We come through the cross. We come through the blood, and we ascend right into that heavenly place tonight, right into that place of the ark of your presence where your glory dwells. We thank you, Father. We come with hearts that are fully assured, fully assured that you have made the way. The door is open. So we thank you for that. We thank you for the assistance of angels tonight, Father. We thank you for the assistance of the seven spirits of God tonight. We thank you, Father, for the assistance with those witnesses in the cloud that are cheering us on. We thank you for that, Father. We thank you, Father, that we can ascend, Lord. We can ascend because heaven is open. Heaven is open, and you have made the way. So, Father, we, we do honor your presence. Jesus, we honor your presence. Holy Spirit, we honor your presence. And we say, do whatever pleases the Father tonight. Do whatever pleases the Father. And Lord, we just give you a shout tonight. Come on, let's just shout out to the... We give you a shout. We give you a shout tonight. We just say you are Lord in this place. You are Lord. And everybody said...
When Joshua Mills was here, he said, with every new day, there's a new song. And with every new song, there's a new glory. So the whole earth is waiting for the sound of you. 
So let's just pick it up just a little bit. Pick it up, pick up the, the rhythm just a little bit and sing your song tonight. Let that sound out tonight. Sing that song, sing in tongues. If you can't sing in tongues, just open your mouth and go fill it, right?
You guys feel that atmosphere? Just declare where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom. Let me, let me just suggest to you that the emphasis on that verse is not freedom. The emphasis is on where the Spirit of the Lord is. Where is the Spirit of the Lord tonight? Freedom's great, but you know what's better than freedom? The Spirit of Christ Jesus. And, and this is what I'd like to do. Um, I want us to go back into some drumming and some dancing. Um, but we're not dancing for freedom tonight. We're dancing with the Spirit of the Lord. We're dancing with the Spirit of Christ Jesus. And, and I, I love declaring freedom, but we're actually going to declare the name above all names tonight. We're, we're going to declare the name above all names. You know, every, every knee, listen now, this isn't even for you, this is for the air right now. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's what I want us to declare tonight. Would everybody stand? I know it's been a long week, and but we'll just stand up to your feet. Come on. Here we go. Lift up the name above all other names tonight. And if you, yeah, come on. Jesus. Victory in this room tonight because Jesus is in the house tonight. Amen. We're not fighting for victory tonight. We're fighting from victory tonight. Amen. One, two, three. The Spirit of the Lord is in this house tonight, amen? The Spirit of Christ Jesus is here tonight, amen? amen. It's, 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 it's the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is here in this room tonight. There is mountain-moving power tonight. There is dead-resurrecting power tonight, and it's all in the name I said, Jesus is here tonight. Jesus is here tonight. Jesus is here tonight. So let's try it again. We're going to proclaim the name of Jesus, and then we're going to worship the Lord with the jump. I, I'm not much of a dancer, unless you, well, I'm a third degree break dancer, but, but what we're going to do tonight is we're going to praise the Lord with one sound and one jump. So even if you are uh, very white in the white department, join me, but look, if you dance in other ways, then let's, let's break out with the Lord of the dance tonight. We're gonna proclaim the name, and we're gonna, we're gonna just create a frequency of praise in this house. Are you ready? One, two, three, Jesus! out of this room tonight and let's ascend over Seattle and let's declare the name above all names. One, two, three, Jesus! Let's praise the Lord tonight. Come on. Thank you, worship team. Let's give a big thank you to the worship team tonight. How about that?
Hey, why don't you give five high fives and say, Jesus is here tonight. You're here tonight. You guys excited about this weekend? How many of you have been waiting for this weekend for some time? How many of you, how many of you came with some expectation this weekend? Ready to go up to some higher levels, yeah? Some greater break. Hey, if you got your Bibles, why don't you turn with me to uh, Mark chapter 12, um, verse 41. Again, Mark chapter 12, verse 41. And tonight we're gonna, we're gonna receive an offering. And then Tony Kemp is going to come and download into this place tonight. But first, we're going to do an upload. How many of you know that when we give, there's an upload that takes place? We take a part of our heart and we upload into the, into the spirit. How many of you know that when you give, you're not just dropping a, uh, an offering into a basket. You're actually taking a part of your heart. Jesus said that where your treasure is, there your heart is also. And when we give, we take a part of our heart and we upload into the spirit. It's interesting here, um, Mark 12, 41. I like reading stories where people get Jesus' attention. And the things that get Jesus' attention are always the things that don't necessarily get um, the religious people's attention. Isn't it interesting that sometimes there are certain things that get God's attention um, that, that, that mankind usually overlooks? You ever notice that? And this is one of those stories where, um, where somebody gets Jesus' attention, and, um, and it involves giving. And, and it says, and he sat down the opposite uh, of the treasury and saw how the crowd was casting money um, into the black baskets on the stage. And, and, and I, I like this part of the story, just being a pastor. I like this part of the story. It says, and many rich people were throwing large sums of money into the basket. Amen? I like that. <laughs> I like that. Wouldn't that be awesome? We say, and we were at, we were at this meeting, and and uh, Tony Kemp was there, and Katie Susan was there, but there were many rich people there throwing large sums of money into the basket. I mean, I don't know. I, I like to have fun. And verse <laughs> in verse forty two. But check it out. But a widow. Um, check it out. But a widow who was poverty stricken. How many of you know that, you, that it's possible to be poverty stricken? To be a victim of poverty. That's what it says. Came and put in two copper mites, the smallest of coins. Meaning this, there is not a smaller offering that, than you could give. When it comes to money, this is like the smallest offering that you could give. Okay? And I love the contrast. In these stories of Jesus, there's always these, this major contrast. In the meeting were billionaires, and they were sowing Teslas into the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> that would be fun. What are we going to do with all these Teslas? Give one to Darren. All right. But also in the meeting was a widow who gave the smallest amount of money imaginable. Isn't this fascinating? How much was it worth? Half a cent, you know? And most people would be like, well, what they do, right? Half a cent. Who cares? Verse 43. And he called his disciples. This is Jesus. He's observing all of this. And Jesus is like, hey, guys, come here. Let's talk about what just took place. Isn't it interesting that Jesus and ladies and gentlemen, Nathan French is in the house. Come on. <laughs> Awakening the planet this weekend. Tacoma Dome. Everybody be there. Look at that. And he called his, now pay attention, stop, stop <laughs> rabbit trailing. He called his disciples and he said to them, check it out. Truly and surely I tell you, this widow who is poverty stricken has put in more than all those contributing to the treasury. Verse 44. For they all threw in out of their abundance, but she, she gave out of deep poverty. And she has put in everything that she had, even all that she had to live on. What's interesting here is that 
Her gift created a frequency in that place that caught the attention of Jesus, so much so that Jesus uses this as a, as a teaching moment. She gives out of this place of, 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 of deep poverty, and what's interesting about this place is that she makes a proclamation. She makes a proclamation that I'm actually going to give tonight out of a place of victory, that I'm not a victim, I am victorious, I'm going to give out of the place where it hurts me the most, and it got the attention of Jesus. And this is what I thought we would do. Actually, before we do this, I just thought I would, I'd also say this. This is interesting. I got a friend who's not even a Christian. And usually, it comes up to me about once a year, he comes up to me and he gives me cash. And he says, put this in the offering at your church. <laughs> and also, and, you know, and I know why. He believes that him giving cash into the offering at the church is going to bring him good luck. That's why he gives. He believes, this is crazy, who would believe this? He believes that his finances can release good fortune. Who would believe such a thing? Who would believe that you could actually give something that you don't even believe in and it would release something from another realm? All right, I don't know. Crazy when non-believers have a lot of faith, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So this is what I thought we would do tonight. We would give from this place tonight where we are proclaiming something with our gift. Yes. That in a part of your heart where there's a lot of pain, in a part of your heart where maybe there's a little bit of hope deferred, in a part of your heart where maybe you need a breakthrough, that maybe you could give from that part of your heart tonight. And that maybe there would be a distinctiveness on your gift tonight. That your gift tonight wouldn't be coming from a place of tradition but it would come from a place that really matters, that you would put some expectancy on your gift. No one here is believing that your gift is gonna bring good luck, but there is the possibility that there is the kind of offering that could actually get the attention of Jesus tonight. There is the possibility that there's the kind of offering that you could give tonight where Jesus says, whoa, 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 whoa. There's something different about that offering because it's coming from a different sort of place. It's coming from Faith. It's coming from this place where everybody else would say, she is a poverty strict. She is a victim of poverty. And in that place, she would say, victims don't give this way. Let's shift something tonight with our giving. Let's, 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 let's address a part of the heart where we have been agreeing with the adversary um, pertaining to the condition of our heart or the, or the condition of our finances or the condition of our marriage. And let's give tonight from that place of stating, yeah, the facts say that I'm a victim. The, the facts say that I'm a victim of poverty, a victim of a, of a poor relationship, the victim of, of abuse. And let's give tonight saying, nope, 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 nope. Not no more. Not no more. I'm giving from a place of victory. I might, I might not be able to see it yet. And yet I know there's the substance of things hoped for and about to be seen. As we give tonight, I want you to go into the future and see yourself a year from now in the future. Because you're at where you're at tonight because of how you sowed a year ago. So I want you to go into the future. I want you to go into November 15th, 2019. Where will you be? Where will your mortgage be? I know where ours will be. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Where will you be with your job? Where will you be with your family? Where will you be? And let's give from that place. Let's give from the future place. Let's give as though breakthrough is inevitable and not just possible. Let's stand. If you're writing a check, you can make it out to SRC. If you're giving a, uh, with cash, there's an envelope in the seat back in front of you. If you're giving with a credit card, you can text to give. The number's on the screen. If you're watching online, what's up, guys? Good to see you online. You're going to get blessed tonight. And you can give tonight, 425-441-3403. 425-441-3403. Yeah, when you're ready to give, why don't you jump up to your feet and I'll just uh, uh, say a, a blessing prayer and then we'll respond by doing what they did. It says, and they took their gifts and they threw their gifts down um, and that's what we'll do. We'll take our gifts and we'll throw our gifts down. Father, we love you and we love your presence. We love who you are. 
Lord, I love the fact that we can give differently, and when we give differently, something shifts in the heavens and you take notice. Father, we ask that there would be a frequency created through our generosity tonight. And that something in the spirit would shift, that even a financial blueprint would shift within our own DNA as we release from a different kind of place tonight. And we just declare the lordship of Christ Jesus over our lives, over our bodies, over our souls and spirits, and over our finances. We say, Jesus, you are Lord over our bank accounts. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And we want to praise you tonight with our offering. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Hey, God bless you as you give. Thursday night. My goodness. Woo! Hungry people. For more of God, right? Yeah. More. There's always more. So it's really good to see you tonight. So I just want to give you a little rundown of what the next couple of days will look like. Tomorrow morning, Pastor Tony will be ministering again at 10 o'clock. And if you've never been to a morning meeting, you got a treat coming. Because I, really, I honestly believe there's a, a really special anointing that God saves for those who make an effort outside of the norm. So if you can, I suggest you come tomorrow and hear Pastor Tony um, bring in more of what he's carrying. That's so um, tomorrow night is, is who? Katie, Katie Souza, right? So Katie's that's ministry that's tomorrow that's night, Friday night. So who are you going to bring? Everybody, Everybody you know that needs their, anything from the Lord at all. Because what Katie carries is very impartable, and you can bring someone who doesn't even really want to come. And, you know, God loves it. So bring them. Okay, so tomorrow night is Katie. Saturday morning is going to be Katie Souza again with that special morning stuff on it. Morning glory. Huh? Okay. <laughs> okay. And then, and then on Saturday night, a special treat. We're just going to blow everything up. Just, it's a free-for-all, exactly right, Pastor Tony, Katie, and whatever Holy Ghost is going to do, and he's got big plans. So Saturday night, come and do that. We're going to go, we're going to go, and then go until we can't go anymore. Okay, okay it sounds good? Now, if, for those of you who do not have a home church, Pastor Tony's going to be ministering here at Seattle Revival Center. On Sunday, Sunday morning, we're going to do a combined service. Instead of our normal 9 and 11, we're going to do a 10 a.m. So if you don't have a, a local church, come on out and get another good dose of the Holy Ghost, and it'll be great. Great way to spend your Sunday morning. Okay? All right. So now, introducing once again, Pastor Darren. <laughs> Gosh, thanks, Jeanette. Awesome. So good, Jeanette. So good. Hey, we are in for a real treat. Um, uh, this is my first time actually being exposed to the, to Das Tony uh, Kemp. But I've, I've heard incredible, incredible things um, from him, uh, about him. Uh, and in fact, a good friend of mine who's a, a, is a pastor, he said, uh, you, got to you got Katie Susan coming. I said, yeah, we also got Tony Kemp coming. He goes, you got to Tony Kemp and Katie? I said, yeah, you've heard of Tony. He goes, yeah, he goes, this guy is amazing. You you guys are going to be in for such a, you know, and then he just went on and on. And um, I was already excited, you know, but uh, but I, I, I'm really excited. And, and let me just do a couple of logistics. Um, you're like, you're always excited. Yeah, whatever. So um, <laughs> we have, uh, we've, <laughs> we've left the baskets out. 
Um, because what we, what we uh, like to do is, I don't know about you, but sometimes something's released and you're like, man, I want to I wanna invest into that. I want to sow into that. And so if something's released and it, and, it, and it pops in your spirit, just, you know, okay, then, uh, then just get up and, um, and run to the front and sow into that. Or if something pops in your spirit, respond like popcorn does in a microwave with just a, uh, come on, right? Like, uh, come on, Tony. Like, hey, or just, if you're old school, just be like, amen. That works too. Um, but let's not, be, let's not be spectators. You know, people watching online, they, they, they have to, their response is silent. It's in a chat box. So don't pretend like you're online tonight responding in a chat box. And actually, it's, it's crazy how many of you actually stream the meetings while you're here in the meetings. Yeah, we know about you. That's strange. Anyways, so don't just respond in the comments. Yeah, let your voice be heard. Be a part of the meeting tonight. Really engage with what the Spirit of the Lord is doing tonight. Break out of that normal kind of weird Christian, you know, religious thing where you just got to sit in your chair and be a good little Christian. Respond tonight. Engage tonight. Is that good? Yeah. Hey, he... Um, he, he travels all through the nations, releasing the word of the Lord, walks in signs, wonders, and miracles. He's created all kinds of resources, from manuals, to, from walking in the glory, to having heavenly encounters. He's crazy practical, but he's also unapologetically supernatural. He's Tony Kemp. He's here tonight. Let's celebrate Jesus as he comes. Come on. Hey, why don't you stretch out your hands. Father, thank you for bringing Tony to Seattle. It's such an honor to have him here. Father, we just pray for the kind of anointing that would make it ministry um, easy, fun, and interesting. God, we just thank you, Father, for the anointing that you've put in him. We receive him for who he is, and we celebrate your grace as it's expressed in this place tonight. We bless him tonight. We receive him to Seattle and Seattle Revival Center. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give Jesus a big hand clap, will you please? Well, first of all, I want to give reverence to the Father, to his son Jesus, to the Holy Spirit. I declare that the kingdom of heaven is in this place, and I speak peace to all who receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Want to give honor to uh, Pastor Darren and to his precious wife. Let's give them a big hand clap. Amen. Amen. Want to give honor to all of the other pastors and leaders and ministers that are part of this local assembly. But let me ask this before I go any further. Do we have any ministers, preachers, pastors, leaders that you're not a part of this church, but you're here tonight, would you wave your hands? Then stand up and let's give these folks a big applause. You and your spouse. Come on, let's give them a big hand clap. Praise the Lord for your coming. Amen. Amen. And then... We have our dear friends, Katie and Heidi and their crew. Let's give them a big hand clap. Amen. Amen. So we're, we're just really, really happy to be with you. And um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, every day that you live, you give off a sound, a smell, and a color. In the spirit world, nothing is hidden. You know, in the book of the prophet Isaiah, some of those who were making sacrifices they drew near to God with their lips, but their heart was far from him. And so the father said, you know, your offerings don't smell good in my nostrils. Which means they didn't smell good. Then the apostle Paul talks about how your sacrifices to the living God 
or a sweet aroma. Look at somebody and say, do you smell good tonight? In the nostrils of God. You know, it's funny. We, uh, <laughs> we know Romans chapter 10, verse 17, in King James Version, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Greek version. Faith is by the report, the report by the utterance of God. But I bet you we don't know verse 18, where it says, their sound went forth to the ends of the earth. So, for those that don't know Jesus and the Father, the sound that they emanate attracts demons. But for those of us who know the Father and Jesus, the sound that we emanate, look at somebody said, attracts angels. Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. And so tonight, your spirit emanates some degree of color. Look at somebody and say, you're colored tonight whether you know it or not. Somehow in our culture, we already know this to be true. Because when somebody gets angry, we'll say they saw red. When somebody has a problem with jealousy, we'll say that they're green with envy. When somebody has a problem with fear or anxiety, or they will not be courageous, we say they're are yellow and they are a coward. So, look at somebody and say, so what color are you tonight? <laughs> because you're always emanating a smell a sound and a color. You know, even the Apostle Paul references this uh, in Ephesians 5. And he starts with like verse 8 or something. And he says, now you used to be in the darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. He says, now walk as sons and daughters of light. Yeah. And this is interesting because this particular version says, for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, proving what is pleasing to the Lord. But you might find another version that says, but the fruit of the light. Come on. Come on. Huh. Look at somebody and say, hee haw. Hee -haw. Very interesting. Only the people are losing hair or no classic TV or remember the 60s know what I'm saying. <laughs> Psalm 119, 130 says this, the unfolding of your word is light. So now we have a reference of the Holy Spirit being the spirit of light and we have the word being the word of light. And John the apostle says that God is light. And in him is no darkness whatsoever. Hmm. So, <laughs> uh, Genesis 1 and 1 says, in the beginning, God, Elohim, plurality of majesty, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, 
He created the heavens and the earth, and with earth without form, and void, and darkness upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, but nothing happened until God said. Everybody say, God made a sound. God made a sound. And he said, let there be light. And there was light. It's interesting because we read the prophet Isaiah in chapter 60 where he says, look at somebody say, get up now. Everybody say, rise, rise. Shine. shine, for your light has come. Look at somebody say, God is light, your light has come, God is here, light is here. Arise, shine, for your light is here, and the glory of the Lord is Look at somebody say, upon What's interesting is if you really look up the word light in the Hebrew, it means order. Look at somebody said light, light is, order. is order, and order, order. is light. So when I walk in the word, I walk in divine order. When I walk in the spirit, I walk in divine order. When I walk in the word, I walk in the light. When I walk in the spirit, or when I pray in the spirit, look at somebody say, I'm praying in the light. I'm just warming up. Look at somebody say, this is just nothing but a teaser. Now, I'll become practical in a minute. I'll be revelatory in a minute, but then I'll become um, educational. Huh. Let me see. So, Enoch walked with God, and he was not. Hmm. Because God took him. Enoch walked with the light. And the scripture says you become like whoever you walk with. And so Hebrews says something about Enoch. In chapter 11, verse 5, it says, By faith, Enoch was taken to heaven. So he would not see death. He was not found because God took him away. Hmm. <laughs> By faith, Enoch was taken to heaven so he wouldn't see death. He was not found because light took him away. For before he was taken, he had this commendation that he pleased the light. So anyway, one of the persons that I saw in heaven was Enoch. And um, <laughs> I saw a number of people in heaven in addition to the light, the glory of God the Father, and the person of Jesus, and Peter, and Paul, and, and Noah, and... Elijah and others. And, you know, for example, I could tell you what certain individuals look like. I could describe them in detail. Like, for example, Elijah looks ancient and youthful at the same time. He has high cheekbones. He has a twinkle in his eye, long flowing beard, has a hairy chest, and looks like when he was on earth, he didn't miss any meals. <laughs> look at somebody say he was well taken care of. And so, you know, um, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say it. <laughs> In case I see him again. <laughs> Ever. 
<laughs> he's got a sense of humor though, really. But he has this fierceness for God to get his just glory. But um, Paul's about five foot tall. Um, he's a little bitty man. I was about his size when I was born. <laughs> Samson is probably 150 pounds uh, wet. That's the great mystery of his supernatural strength. I'm going to leave you alone. But coming back to Enoch, Enoch was a person whose features I could not make out because of the light. And so when I saw the glory of God, the Father, as in the form of a human being seated upon the throne in the form of a bright white light where you could not see, I could not see his features because of the brightness of the light and because of the smoke, the cloud that surrounded him. Um, my first encounter with this was in 1989 when I left. Um, this angel came and he was about five foot 10, looked between 20 and 30, chocolate brown, black kind of hair. And I went up, saw the glory of God, met Jesus face to face, and there were witnesses. But Enoch looked a lot like God the Father in terms of the brightness of the light that emanated from his being. So Enoch, I'm just going to, some things I'm just going to say. Enoch, oh, by the way, from the original language, when it says that Enoch pleased God, in the original language, this is what it means. It means that Enoch enjoyed God and was being enjoyed by God. But Enoch learned how to put his human spirit first, his soul second, and his body third. Everybody say divine order. That's exactly right. Because what, <laughs> what the word does when it unfolds, what the spirit of God, the spirit of the light does when it shines, it shows you how the word and the spirit of light shows you how to put your human fir spirit first under the lordship of Jesus and God the Father. That light shows you how to get healed so that your soul will submit to your spirit that submits to the lordship of Jesus and God the Father. And then your body comes under your soul. Everybody say divine order. Now we read it in scripture because Psalm 119, 133, if I could put it in the form of a prayer, says, O Lord, in your word, order my steps. <laughs> so what did Enoch do? Look at somebody say, he's just giving you a teaser. Look at somebody say, he's not going to preach the whole thing today. He's just giving you a teaser. One of the secrets of Enoch was he learned how to be conscious of the light, the presence the glory all day every day constantly continuously until it became his habit and he turned visitation into habitation until walking in the light became permanent yep
So you may say, well, you know, that's, uh, that's really woo, woo, woo. <laughs> but how can that work itself out in my life today? Well, let's, let, let me give you something historically. There was a man b born in 1863 by the name of George Washington Carver. How many of you ever heard the name George Washington Carver? Yes, a very historical African-American figure. Okay, how many of you knew that George Washington Carver was saved? Raise your hands if you knew he was saved. Some of you knew that. So he walked in the light. How many of you knew that George Washington Carver prayed in the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues? Raise your hands. So George Washington Carver had a relationship with the light, with the Father, with the God of glory. And he says to the Lord one day, Lord, show me the secrets of the universe. To which the Lord replied, little man, you are too small for me to show you the secrets of the universe, but I will show you the secrets of the peanut. Everybody say, when you walk in the light, it benefits others. Now, it depends upon who you read, whether they say he found by supernatural revelation, because he would actually read the word of God, think the word, speak the word, do the word. Everybody say, the light. light. He'd pray in the light. Pray. Everybody say, pray in the spirit. Pray. And he would go out in the field, and he'd get revelation. So some say he had 72 uses of the peanut. Some say he found, he found by revelation 300 uses of the peanut. Look at somebody say, you enjoying his revelation today. Because of the light. Because light is revelation. The Lord showed him about paints, dyes, rubber, I don't know if you were aware of this, but when Henry Ford was looking for a great tire, the man he went to see was George Washington Carver, and God showed him how to put a tire together. Look at somebody say, when you walk in the light, you bless others. Did you know that George Washington Carver made more inventors and more millionaires than Harvard, Yale, and Stanford in his day. Look at somebody say, you ought to walk in the light. <laughs> Did you know that outside of Henry Ford's kids, he left more money to George Washington Carver's college than anyone else. Did you know that George Washington Carver was a member of the Royal Society of the Arts in the UK, which was rare for an American, let alone an African American in that day? Look at somebody say, when you walk in the light, there are no cultural limitations. Did you know that when <laughs> President Roosevelt needed some help, he consulted with a man who walked in the light? Today, we are having interesting discussions about tariff and tariff wars. Did you know that George Washington Carver was called into Congress and they consulted him to get his because of agriculture, to get his ideas on what sort of terrorists they should do or not do, and they followed his counsel. Look at somebody say, the power of the light. So when you walk in the light, it makes you a genius in the area of your calling. When you walk in the light, it makes you brilliant 
in your vocation, your career, and your profession. When you walk in the light, it will make you a better husband and a better father. When you walk in the light, it will make you a better wife and a better mother. When you walk in the light, it will make you a better son and a better daughter. When you walk in the light, everybody say, you're innovative. You're creative. Look at somebody saying, you get things done. When you walk in the light, yes, you achieve, but you become. Yes, when you walk in the light, you do the works of Christ. But when you walk in the light, you become like Christ. Everybody say doing and being. Everybody say achievement and becoming. Everybody say, this is nothing but a teaser. <laughs> no, it's just a teaser, it's just a teaser. It's just, yeah, that's all it is, it's just a teaser. Because I'm just nothing but a big teddy bear tease. <laughs> so, you know, I read like Ephesians 1.17, where Paul starts talking about, you know, I'm praying for you, that the God of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of the Father, that the eyes of your understanding may be Flooded. Huh. That's the as if you understand in Greek word dianoia, which means imagination. That the as if your imagination may be flooded with <laughs> properly framed photographs in the kingdom of heaven. Photizo. Everybody say light. So I have a friend of mine, uh, his name is Wintrick, and uh, he was on drugs and he was living in the projects, and he couldn't read because he was classified as retarded. And he got touched by the light of Jesus Christ and got delivered from alcohol, got delivered from drugs. In fact, he actually had demon activity in his house and these demons were, cat I mean, it was moving stuff in the house. Demons got uh, thrown out of the house, out of the property, off the property. And so uh, he was married, and, and, and his wife would read the word to him. Everybody say, the unfolding of the word, the word. Creates, light. creates light. Everybody say, healing light. healing light. So, you know, his wife's reading the word of God to him every day. Every day, every day for at least an hour, sometimes more. And she came across a word she couldn't understand. I still had that happen to me. How many of you ever read the Bible and didn't know the word? <laughs> couldn't say it, even if you did know it. And so he said, give me the Bible. And instantly his brain was healed. Everybody say, all the way from the projects. So he began to de develop this relationship with the Father of light and with Jesus who said in John 8, I am the light and whoever follows me shall not stay in darkness but shall have the light of everybody say life. life. Okay. And the spirit of light gets filled with the Holy Ghost and, and, and he begins to get everybody say revelation and enlightenment. And the Lord says, you know, you, can you clean? Yes, I can clean. We'll start a cleaning business. So he starts a cleaning business. And one day he's cleaning this nursing home. And the nursing home director walks out with some coffee and he says, hmm. And the Lord says to him, everybody say, the light can talk to you. And says, you can do that. So he takes the state test, he takes the federal test, and he passes it. And he becomes a nursing home administrator. In fact, he becomes the nursing home administrator of the very place he was cleaning. Look at somebody who said, the light can help you make progress. Because in the light, the word impossible does not exist.
In fact, the light makes the impossible possible. So, eventually, to shorten the testimony, because I discipled him, he ends up owning the nursing home that he used to clean. And then he and another guy got together, and God gave them this idea on how nursing homes can make money. Look at somebody that said, the light can cause you to prosper. So he takes it to the Missouri Senate and they approve the plan. And then this multimillionaire sees that everything that my brother does turns to gold and says, you know what? I'm going to be your investor. And now they have lots of nursing homes. And he runs, he oversees 3,000 employees. And he would get his wife up, just before, see, I'm, t I'm, I'm telling you how it started. He would get his wife up and his kids up, and they would spend time in the presence of God three hours before school and before work. Look at somebody say, the power of the light. The light. See, the light can heal your heart. The light can heal your mind. The light can heal your body. Look at somebody say, the light can heal your finances. So, you know, let's just say, you know, to get to his house now, you got to open up the gate. <laughs> Look at somebody say, he's in a gated place. In gated place. Everybody say, healing light. Healing light. Miracle, light. Miracle light. Look at somebody say, I think I'll take some of that. <laughs> so now, I, it's going to appear as if my question is not connected to my teaching. And I've been teaching for 27 minutes. Because I used to pastor, and you always look at the clock <laughs> when you pastor. But how many of y'all know that preachers' minutes are longer than regular minutes? So, um, I want to take a little survey, and here's my survey. How many of you are here tonight, and you have either discomfort or pain in your body, whether it's mild, moderate, or severe? Raise your hands and keep them up, because this is not be nice to old people weekend. <laughs> now, just look around the room. Okay, all right, you can put your ha hands down. So, what I'm gonna do, now look at somebody say, he, he, he gonna come back to that light thing after a while. <laughs> and, in, and in fact, I'm still teaching the light, I'm just doing it a different way now. Yeah, we move in that direction. Everybody say, the unfolding of God's word, of God's word is, light. is light. So, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of light. And uh, let me tell you what's in my head as I'm doing this. Um, you know, Ephesians... Um, four said this here, said, you know, the Father has given through Jesus, uh, verse 11, some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers to, you know, equip the saints to do the work of the ministry, to build up the body of Christ so that you can come to maturity. Everybody say, the height and the fullness, and the fullness of, Jesus. of Jesus. So, um, I probably should say this. Usually I give about 10 or 15 testimonies of miracles. <sighs> but I got plenty of time to do that. 
Suffice it to say, I've seen more blind people see than I can remember, more deaf people hear than I can remember, seen people get up out of wheelchairs, seen gross tumors, AIDS, sugar diabetes, cancer healed. I've seen people lose supernatural weight loss, uh, 50 pounds in the church service. You know, if you pull on God, that might happen in the morning. Look at somebody say, but he ain't doing that tonight. <laughs> Look at somebody say, light can really make it happen. So anyway, uh, let me, <laughs> so you know, we, we've seen literally all kinds of miracles, creative miracles, body parts appear where there are no, were none, you know. We've seen metal turn to bone, we've seen metal act like bone. I mean, crazy stuff. So, um, but anyway, look at somebody say, you're going to get some education now. <laughs> so, um, so I want to talk a little bit about the healing ministry of Jesus. And uh, here's my question. How many miracles did Jesus perform? I like to preach out of my phone sometimes because it's easier. I can move faster. You know, even some of us old people, you know, we've updated a little bit. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So that means if Jesus did miracles yesterday, he's still doing miracles today. He's going to do some miracles tomorrow. Amen. Look at somebody say, the present day ministry of Jesus. So in John 21, verse 25, it says this, I suppose... And he's describing something in the Greek that's impossible. In other words, it's impossible to tell everything Jesus did. I suppose every, if we tried to record everything Jesus did, it would fill the, fill the world with books. We wouldn't have no books. It says, Jesus has done so much. Can I be educational for a minute? Yes. Okay. So we only have a fraction or an insight into the actual ministry of Jesus. And here's what I mean. Don't speak out loud. Look at somebody and say, don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> How many days of Jesus' life are actually recorded in the full Gospels? Your first thought is going to be to think three and a half years. But then the question is, is how much of that time is actually documented in the full Gospels? You really only have, at a maximum, three, 53 different events. And many of those events happen on the same day. So the actual number of days is between 22 and 28. That's recorded in the Gospels. And you never have one full day recorded. Look at somebody say, not one. Not one. So, <laughs> so if Jesus' was, life was so filled with healing power and miraculous events, because Jesus is the... So basically you have two words. There's five words that we could discuss in healing, but I'm only going to mention two. Everybody say healing light, healing miracle light. light. Two words to describe the healing ministry of Jesus. One is, everybody go, yay, yay. Oh, oh, may I? Yeah. Let's do it again. Everybody go, yay, yay. Oh, oh, may I? It's a word that means to cure or to be doctored. It's the word for doctor in the, in the original language. And it means to be doctored. Everybody say healing power. And I need to hear this part. It's progressive and it reverses a condition and it restores. Why did they use the word doctor? Why did the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the light, want to give you that word because when you went to a physician you expected him to give you something that would cause you hour by hour day by day to get better until you're completely cured this is one of the words used to describe the healing ministry of Jesus in other words Jesus would speak his word to you everybody say he was the light he would release the light and the light would make you better and better, hour by hour, 
moment by moment until you are completely well. Look at somebody say, you got to get in the light, stay in the light, bathe in the light, be baptized in the light until you're healed by the light. This Greek word actually means that there were people that Jesus spoke to and ministered to in these situations that were not instantly healed. But they were progressively healed. It was as if Jesus gave them medicine. And as they continued to believe and to obey, they got better and better until they were completely well. You read it. Ten lepers say, Son of David, Messiah, have mercy on us. And Jesus says, go show yourselves to the priest, which is to say you're healed. And the scripture says, as they went, they were healed. Because when you're in the presence of the light and you follow the instruction of the light, the light removes your spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical leprosy. Yeah. In John's Gospel, chapter 5, a man who had a sick son comes to Jesus and says, come to my house and heal my son. Jesus says, I ain't got to come to your house. I just got to send you some light. This is the light I'm sending to you that's going to go to your son after it hits you. Go home. Your son going to live. Look at somebody say, leaving light. Leaving light. So he goes home and somebody meets him and says, your son's alive. And he says, when did he begin, knows the word, to amend? Everybody say, yeah, or may I? He found out it was the very time when the light spoke and brought disorder into order. Look at somebody say, by the revelation of the word, find out where you're in disorder, find out where the darkness and the chaos is. And let the light shine until chaos comes into order. Now look at somebody said, tonight God says, let there be light. Now I'm just introducing the subject. That's all I'm doing. I'm just introducing the subject. The primary word, though, that's used to describe the healing ministry of Jesus in the four Gospels is the Greek word, everybody say, therapeo, from where we get the word therapy. So this word means that Jesus would speak a word or touch a person, watch this, and it required their participation and their cooperation in order for the healing to become complete. Look at somebody say, in order for you to be spiritually healed, look at them, talk, look at them, preach at them, say, in order for you to be spiritually healed, mentally healed, emotionally healed, physically healed, it requires your participation. That's what the word means. Don't believe me, look it up. Believe it up. That means, when it required their participation, the person could receive the power of God that would cause a miraculous healing. When the word therapeo or therapy is used, it means that Jesus has given you this message. I'm going to heal you, but you have to cooperate with me. You have to follow my instructions. And as you and I walk and work together, as you participate with me, God's light, God's glory, and God's power will give you a, everybody say, miracle of healing. 
The scripture gives us a number of examples in which Jesus used this method to administrate healing light and miracle power. Okay? Now again, look at somebody say, he's not going to go into everything. That's what I'm doing. Look at somebody say, he's making you hungry. Look at the man in the synagogue that had a withered hand. Jesus says, stand in front of everybody. Everybody say, Jesus had a revelation. Ah, I will drop this on you just because I feel like messing with you. The father <laughs> of glory. Everybody said the glory. The glory. Uh-huh. Sp spirit of wisdom and revelation. Hmm. That the eyes of your understanding. Wait a minute. Everybody say revelation. revelation. Understanding. understanding. Dianoia. Dianoia. Imagination. imagination. Why do you need to get your soul healed? Because the way that revelation travels from your spirit into your soul is on the screen of imagination. And when revelation travels on through your soul and becomes imagination, it's what connects you to the realms of heaven. Everybody say revelation, revelation. Imagination, imagination, revelation, revelation. Human, human spirit, human spirit. Holy, Ghost. Holy Ghost. Everybody say imagination, imagination. Bridge. bridge, soul, soul. Connects, to connects to the next realm. Everybody say when that happens, when that happens revelation, revelation becomes manifestation. What does that mean? That means that in a miracle is nothing more than God's revelation and imagination manifesting in front of your eyes. So what Jesus did is he understood what Enoch understood. Because the people who sat in darkness saw a great light. So this isn't just true with regards to healing and miracles. Everybody say innovation. innovation. Everybody say robotics. robotics. Everybody say IT. IT. Everybody say medical services. Medical. Everybody say entrepreneurship. Medical. Everybody say business. Medical. Everybody say wealth creation. Medical. Everybody say wealth management. Medical. So when we talking about this, look at somebody say, it ain't woo, 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 woo. Look at somebody say, it's practical. It's practical. Right now. Right now. <laughs> so what Katie and I will end up doing as this weekend progresses, we want to give you more than inspiration and motivation. We want to give you revelation and the sequence of steps on how to. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, she asked me, she says, uh, what you going to talk about? I said, light and glory. She says, that's what the Lord's been talking to me about. I, I, I perceive her to be a prophet. Can I tell you a secret? Can I tell you a revelation of the light? God being light. Whatever he teaches you to do once, look at somebody and say, after you've done it once, you can do it again. Everybody say, after he's taught you, once you've done it, it can happen again. This is one of the secrets of the Sears. You ought to watch that video I did with Patricia King. It, look at somebody say, it might help you a little bit. So Jesus has a revelation, 
and he has the imagination of the father and he sees this guy supposed to stand in the middle and he says, stretch forth your hand. I'm not going to go into all the revelation about that right now, but the man follows the revelation. Look at somebody say he participates. And the minute he begins to do what Jesus said, look at somebody said the miracle happens. Now at this point's important because I, I pretty much have to set you up for what's getting ready to happen. Everybody say number one revelation. Everybody say the right response, participation, promise results. Everybody say revelation, right response, participation, the presence of God, the power of God, right results. Okay. Now, I, I never get done because, you know, I used to pastor. And we never get done. We just have to quit at a certain point. And I am uh, 15 minutes away from quitting. Well, we're going to, no, people going to start getting healed, and it won't be my fault, so don't blame me. <laughs> and I'm like, they're just going to start getting healed. You'll see in a few minutes, in about 15 minutes or so. You know, somebody say, because the glory of God is here. Because look at somebody say, because the light is here. Because the presence is here. You know, because I feel kind of lazy tonight. I don't feel like <laughs> participation brought healing. Hmm. Number two, the man at the pool who had been paralyzed for 38 years, Jesus tells him to get up. And the minute he participates, the power of God hits his body and his paralysis is gone. Look at somebody say, there's a whole lot more in that. But he's not going to tell you right now. Then there's the man in the house who was paralyzed. Jesus told him to take up his bed and go home. And the minute the man responded to the revelation, he got the promised results. His paralysis disappeared. He got up and walked away. Then there was the man that Jesus made mud and told him to go wash. And he washed his eyes. And as soon as he did, he could see. Hmm. The majority of the time, Jesus required the participation of the sick to do something in order to activate God's miracle power for healing. Now, let me just say this to you. So John 2 and 5 says this. Mary says to these servants, she says, whatever Jesus tells you to do, do it. Look at somebody say, you ought to listen to the Virgin Mary. I believe that right there I should listen to the Virgin Mary. Look at somebody say, whatever Jesus tells you to do, you ought, you ought to do it. So, you know, if I was going to, you know, be a good Baptist, that'd be point number one, you know, intro body conclusion. Look at somebody and say, whatever Jesus tells you do, do it. So point number one is whatever Jesus tells you to do, do it. Point number two, do what you can't do. Because the minute Jesus tells you to do it, now you can what? Because the minute he says it, you're supernaturally empowered to do it because the light gives you the power. Because anytime the light is present or the presence of God is there, life happens. I mean, when there was this dispute, over who should be high priest. Moses said, well, all 12 of you heads of the tribes, bring me some sticks. Rods mean sticks. Everybody say, what number sticks? <laughs> and he said, whatever stick sprouts, buds, and blossoms, that's the high priest. Look at somebody say, and the light, and the glory, and the presence of God, Hit Aaron's rod. Look at somebody say, you ought to be like that rod. Look at somebody say, let the light hit you tonight. Sprout, bud, blossom. Because wherever the light comes, there is life. Everybody say, healing life is here tonight. Everybody say, miracle life is here tonight. 
Y'all gonna make me preach like T.D. Jakes up in here. I, I can do it. Yeah, I can do it. I can do it. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon I'll be telling y'all to get ready. You know what's funny about us? Let me tell you what's funny about us. We actually believe that if you're close to somebody that has a contagious disease that's airborne, you can catch the disease. And for some people, that's true. But what if I was to tell you that the light of healing and the light of miracles is in this sanctuary and that you can catch an airborne healing. What if I was to tell you that you can catch an airborne healing right now because the glory of God is in this sanctuary? nothing to catch an airborne disease. You just got to be present. What if I was to tell you that just because you're here, you can catch an airborne healing because healing is in the atmosphere. What if I told you you can catch an airborne miracle because the light of his presence is in the atmosphere and just like you can breathe in a miracle and your sickness can die. You know, we read Malachi where it says, now this is interesting, the son of righteousness shall arise. Look at somebody said, the son of righteousness is rising in this place right now. And look at somebody say, and there's some healing in the wings. That means the breath of God. That means the wind of God. Everybody say, light is here. Wind is here. Everybody say, healing angels are here. Miracle angels are here. He makes his angels winds and his ministers, everybody say fire and light. Look at somebody say, just relax and receive the light. Right now through this natural light you see. You ain't doing nothing. Look at somebody say, you just under the light. Look at somebody say, and yet there's a supernatural light here. Look at somebody say, and it's shining on you. It's a healing light. It's a miracle light. In fact, I want you to, I want you to do something. I want, I want you to check yourself and see how many of you, your pain has started to decrease already. And if it has, stand to your feet. If it's already started to decrease, stand to your feet. Because healing light is already shining. And you just keep standing. And some of you, it's going to hit you in just a second. I mean, I was just in, uh, <laughs> uh, I was just, I was just Pampano Beach with my cousins, Otis Kemp, Johnny Kemp, prophets and apostles. And this woman had a <laughs> pacemaker. And she don't know where it went. 
We don't know where it went. It was out there, and then it wasn't there. We don't care where it went. And so, like, when, when your pain is, like, 80% gone, just come up to the front, look at the people. Because light is healing people right now. You should check yourself. Rosie, you're sitting. As soon as you feel pain decreasing, everybody say, revelation. revelation. Response. As soon as you feel it decreasing, get up. Because I speak to the darkness of your disease and I command it, leave the body and leave the property. I speak to the pain and the cause of the pain. Leave the body. Die, dissipate, and disappear under the burning light of Jesus now. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. As soon as it gets to 80% down, just come on up. God's doing it. And as soon as you feel pain decreasing, you can stand up. Jesus is doing it. Everybody say, his glory is here. I ain't got to do nothing now except for stand here and look good. <laughs> and by the way, if you're standing, don't pray. You actually slow your miracle down because you're transmitting, you're not receiving. So if you're a woman, praying in your head is still praying. <laughs> Brothers, I don't have to worry about y'all. Y'all just go into the nothing box, but... But women, y'all just breathe. Because you're not, it's, it's hard to transmit and receive at the same time. I'm trying to get you to receive. Yeah, the scripture says God sent forth his word and healed them. The scripture says, I'm the Lord, your physician. I'm the Lord who heals you. I'm the Lord, your healer. The scripture says you serve the Lord and he takes your sickness away. The scripture says that Jesus was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities. The punishment that brings him peace, brings you peace, was placed upon him. And by his sufferings at the whipping post, you're healed. By his wounds, you were healed. As soon as you get to 80%, come on up. You can judge that. Jesus is doing it now. Thank you, Jesus. And those of you that don't have pain, y'all can go ahead and praise the Lord out loud. Let me hear you. Come on, praise God in tongues. Let me hear you. That's it. As soon as you get to 80%, come on up. Yeah, you know, uh, some people are waiting for a word of knowledge. I'm not going to do that yet. Look at somebody say, just take your miracle right from the presence. <laughs> yeah, because we need to learn how to receive just straight from the glory. Now, you know, one of the things you can do is... Start doing what you couldn't do. Because I talked about whatever Jesus says to do, do it. Do what you can't do. 
Then the scripture says, do what you're afraid to do. Because <laughs> that's how Peter walked on the water. God's doing it. I'm very patient. Yeah, just make one line and just look at the people. Just make one line and look at the folks. Yeah, just one line. Y'all can go ahead and praise the Lord in tongues as, 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 as God's doing this. As soon as you get to 80%. Yeah, just get to 80%. Come on, let me hear you pray in tongues. I hope some people come over here. God's healing people right now. In fact, why don't y'all just move right on down? Move, move right, yeah, keep moving. Just keep moving right on down. Because folks seem to be getting healed a lot on this side right now. So just keep moving down. Now, let me ask this. Do I have anybody who has a foreign substance in your body and it causes you discomfort? Wave at me. Foreign substance, that means metal, cobalt, titanium, steel, anything. Anybody. You have, to, you have to wave till you got my attention. Okay, so you got, okay, there's one, there's two. Anybody else? There's three, there's four. Okay, y'all look at me. I, sp I speak to that metal. I speak to that metal. I speak to that foreign substance, I command it to transform. Where the word of a king is, there's power. Kings can delete matter, change matter, create matter. I command bone to be, I command bone to be created. Metal, act like bone, metal dissolve and become bone. I command the pain and the reason for the pain, dissolve. Dissipate, disappear now. And Lord, let them have full, complete mobility. In Jesus' name. As soon as you begin to feel pain decreasing, stand up if you're one of those. Y'all praise the Lord. Keep praising the Lord out loud. God's doing it. I'm telling you, Jesus is healing people. Uh-huh. Whatever Jesus tells you to do, everybody say participation. See, you responded. As soon as you responded to the Spirit of God, he began to work. As soon as you get to 80%, just come on up. You'll go to 100 once you get up here. God's doing it right now. Mm -hmm. You're catching the healing. You're catching a miracle. From his presence. Come on, let me hear you pray out in the spirit. Come on. Come on. Let's, let's do it for three minutes out loud. Let me hear you. Go. I have 913. Come on. Three minutes. And if you're up here uh, standing, don't pray. I just want you to receive from the presence. Come on, don't stop. You still got two more minutes. Come on. Two more minutes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That's it, keep going. Come on, lift it a little louder. 
You know, just like people get sick from airborne diseases at different paces, people get healed at different paces. Some people getting a Yale Mayi, a gradual healing, but somebody's getting a Theropeo right now. Hallelujah. 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 Now, there's going to be many different other kinds of healings this weekend, but we start with discomfort tonight. Hallelujah. It's hard for people to receive revelation when they're hurting. Give me 60 seconds of a violent praise. Lift your voice. Come on, 60 seconds. <laughs> 60 seconds. Hallelujah. Now, as they begin to testify, some of you will be healed. You just come on up when you get 80% or more. Hallelujah. 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 Don't stop. Don't stop. Keep praising him. If she'll keep track of the number. Come on, don't stop. Don't wait for me to do anything, because I'm not doing anything. When you're moving in the realm of faith, you work. When you're moving in the realm of the anointing, you work. But when you move in the realm of the glory, he works and you rest. He, you know, he's working. I said, the Father's working. <laughs> okay, let's see what's happening. Who's at 100% already? Wave at me. Whoever's at 100%, wave at me. Get my attention. Whoever's at 100%. Okay, so if you're at 100%, come on up. Come on up if you're at 100%. And, and the rest of you, you're going to go to 100. Just, just stay in the presence. Um, here's my question. It's the same question for everybody. I'm going to want to know your first name. I'm going to want to know what your condition was, how long you had it, and what Jesus did for you. You got it? All right. All right. And we're going to praise the Lord for everybody that Jesus heals. It's very important that we praise him after every testimony. And then pay attention to what happens to you as they share. So, look at the camera. And what's your name? My name is Shani. Uh huh. Shani Shi. Uh huh. Um, I got injured really bad in the army. I'm a veteran, and uh -huh. my lower back and my shoulder was injured badly. What What did they say was wrong with it? If you could tell us, real briefly. Um, I was in the airborne school. I jumped off the airplane, and so I got my back injured really badly. And okay. And then it's been bothering me constantly. And then for how long? My pregnancy even caused it worse. For how long? For ten years. Ten years. Yeah. And then you got pregnant. Yeah, I, I'm I'm now pregnant mm -hmm. with my third son. I mean, I don't know it gender. But. The third one. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for that. And now? And now I don't feel any pain at all. No pain, no pain at all. Like my lower back, my shoulder, and all all gone. When you went to the doctor, did they say it was bone, muscle, ligament? Did they say? Um, first started was a fracture, and then it get worse when gen, you know the tender and the bone issue and muscle issues and all like. So all of that, agenda, yeah. and now you're all good. All good. You go praise the Lord. Bless you. <laughs> Who's next? Come up. Same thing. Okay. First thing. Margaret. And. And um, I guess a couple of years ago, I injured my um, backside <laughs> um, exercising, and it was like the sciatic nerve, and it would be really, 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 really painful. And um, anyway, as it started easing, and it's, it's not hurting anymore. And I also um, broke my toe and injured my foot about probably about six months ago, and I can feel it's, it's, it's 
It's healing. It's getting there. It's getting there. And I'm, I'm claiming the full miracle. Where, did you have discomfort in your toe? Oh, yeah. Or, oh, yeah. Well, I, I'm, 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 I've actually done this more than once. I have a habit of breaking my little toes. <laughs> I'm a little... Okay, but you got, but you got, yeah, but, but, but you got cute this, shoes. But, but, oh yeah, but but this one, but this one hurt. Well, but this one, I, I I injured it even worse. But I I um just was claiming a miracle. Let me let me ask you this: ten being the level of pain before prayer with the toe, and zero being no pain. Where would you put it now? Um, it, it's not so much pain. It just feels weird. It feels weird. It feels weird because it I don't, it didn't heal back right or yeah. something. But I'm I'm. Okay, so 10 being the level of weird and zero being not weird at all. This is a weird conversation. <laughs> well, now this What's one, the level of weird? Okay, this, this one was the pain. This is the weird. Okay, yeah. um, I am a yeah, odd person. Um, I would say it was, it's 10. It's weird. I mean, it's weird. But it's, it is maybe at a, a 3 or 4. So you're like 60, 70% less weird. Yeah. In your, in, your, in your wonder of healing. Yeah, but I, 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 I've, been, I've been wanting, I'm mean, expecting God to heal this. Yeah, you know? yeah, so. well, well, Lord, Lord, let her go to zero weird in Jesus' name. <laughs> I've never prayed that prayer. Who else is at 100? Just come on up, whoever you are at 100 already. 100%. Who's, yeah, if you're 100, come on up. And if you're like 98, 99, 95, you can come up. Yeah. Praise God, I had really bad knee pain when I was here, and we were dancing. I'm just like, oh, okay. I sat down for a while because it was hurting, but it's gone. It, How long had you had it? Uh, years. I can't. Remember. 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah, my daughter's 26. It started at about 25 <laughs> when I was pregnant with her, so yeah. So, 25 years, just on and off, but yeah, now it's, it's gone, and I just felt like God was, like, aligning things in my knee, and my, yeah. So, and so now you have more liberty. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord. Bless you. 100, 99, 98, it doesn't matter, because once you get to 80, you're, you're going to be, you're going to go to 100. Just come on up. Yeah, just come on up. Yes. Okay, hi, I'm Abby, and I work in a job for the last two years where I'm sitting constantly so I get this stiff neck mm -hmm. and I was I had a little bit of discomfort this evening mm -hmm. uh, and I wasn't able to do that mm -hmm. earlier it, it was painful doing that and in the lower back yeah. so it's been about two years and I would say I'm about 95 percent right yeah girl you'll go to 100 <laughs> amen you're good who else come just come my name is Richard um Back when I was about 30 years old, I fell off a roof, almost broke my neck and back. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've had problems with my neck and most of my life. And then, anyway, long story short, um, and the pain's gone. Wow. Bless you. Praise the Lord. Who else? Yes. My name is Jamie. Everybody go, hi, Jamie. And listen, when you, if your pain gets to 80%, just come on up. Don't wait for me to call you. Just go ahead. So I had hip pain. And so when I would sit, it would just get uncomfortable and hurt. And um, How long had you had it? Just like six months. Six months. Yeah. But it was really bad. Kind of felt like I was hurting before my age. And uh, it's hot. Mm -hmm. It's just my whole leg's hot. There's no pain. I keep. I don't want to find it, but it's not there. So. Praise the Lord. Bless you. Who else? Yeah, 90, it doesn't matter. My name is Leilani, and I have been suffering with what I think is a torn rotator cuff. Mm -hmm. Extremely painful. But how long? Only about six months, but I've been seeking the Lord for healing. Yes. He told me it was going to be progressive, yes. and I'm here to end it tonight. Yes. The pain was so excruciating today. Um, and, and it was like, I just, I'm going, I'm not, I'm, I'm getting it all in it. Look, you're good. <laughs> Somebody praise the Lord. Bless you. And I had knee pain, which I've had for over 10 years. Had you been to the doctor for that? Oh, or? Yes, I've had surgery. Yeah, but, but you need to tell them because 
they need to understand the, the past history because it helps them get their healing. Oh, yeah, I've had surgery on it and well, over 10 years ago. Uh -huh. And today, it was throbbing like the worst toothache, uh -huh. and that's gone. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Somebody give God a praise. Come on, let's praise him for 30 seconds. Hi. My name's Lori, and I had a torn meniscus in my left knee, and I've had it about on and off irritation for a couple of years. And when we first started praying, I started feeling sort of a change. Um, I don't want to say heat, but I could just feel there was something going on there. And um, just gradually, now it's like it's gone totally, the pain. So, You go praise him, girl. Bless you. Who else? Just come up, whoever you are. My name's Gwen, and I had an IT strain, which affects your knee, and I, w I went to the doctor, didn't help. I did all these exercises and icing and all that stuff, and it didn't help. But um, like the other lady said, I just determined to come tonight because I need to be healed, and I am about 80%. It's, Amen. The, it's not 100, but I'm, I'm waiting for the... You're getting a yay or may I? No, it's progressive. It's already started. What happens is, is you just keep believing until you get to completion. And I decree it in Jesus' name. Come on. Um, I'm Erica, and yeah. um, I tripped and fell about uh, almost about four years ago. And, um, and then I just was recently in a, a fender bender, and I got rear-ended, so it flared up a bit. So what flared up? My, sh my shoulder. Okay. So when I tripped and fell, I fell forward on my elbows and my knees. And so it went up and back. Okay. And so there was some soft tissue damage and um, it would radiate up into my neck and um, not fun stabbing pains behind the ear, all that kind of stuff. So um, it's been giving me a little bit of a hassle here the last couple of weeks. So um, just it's feeling a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, it's Quantify it for me. Ten being the level of discomfort before prayer and zero being none. Where would you put it? It was at like a constant five. Right. And I'd say it's about a one right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, girl, you're, you're good. You go praise him. Yeah, you're, you're, you're going to go to a hundred. Who else? Eighty or above. It doesn't matter. Just come on. Hi, my name is Gail. And, um, this spring, I was upstairs, I had my socks on, and I decided I was going to walk down the, the carpeted stairs, and I had a cup of boiling hot tea in one hand, and I had a glass plate in the other hand, so I didn't have any hands to hold the handrail, and so I slipped, and then I bounced all the way down, and I cracked my tailbone, uh, which uh, for the last six months, and, and it seems like it bothers me more when I go to church and sit on the, the hard chairs and whatever. But God has healed it. It's like it's, it's, it's totally gone away. Thank you. How long ago did this happen? About six months ago. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Bless you. Who else? Doesn't matter who. Matter of fact, I think I'll sit down on the job. Come on, let's sit down. So I don't. I'm going to go out in faith and just yes. saying that I have a herniated disc yes. and scoliosis. Yes. And on the plane, my back was hurting. My second plane was hurting a lot on yes. the right side. So I just felt heat on my back. Yes. I still do have pain on yes. the right side when I twist. Yes. I feel the pain. Um, but I'm going in faith that he's starting to do work on me. Yes. So. Um, I want you to sit beside Heidi. I'm going to get to you later. Yeah, sit right beside her. Yes. My name is Renee. Uh, I've had fibromyalgia and um, uh, tendonitis and come a little close huh? and arthritis and uh, you know just plagued with pain and discomfort. I am feeling heat in my knees and in my feet, but the tendon on this my Achilles tendons. I have a lot of issues with, so they're not quite done being tweaked yet. Yeah, yeah. I am feeling better. Ten, ten, ten being the level of discomfort before prayer and zero being none. Would you put that right now? 
Uh, I'd put it probably out of four. Okay. Give me your hand. You guys stretch forth your hands and let's pray for her. Come on, stretch forth your hands. Don't pray in your head, girl. Okay. I'm hearing you. I'm feeling you. <laughs> Jesus told me, he said, with your hands you'll heal. He said the sick will be healed immediately. And he talked about a gift of healing and miracles and all of that. Father, bring her miracles of healing to completion. And Lord, you know, whatever areas where her soul needs healing, go ahead and do that, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. You going to be around with us this weekend? Good. Because we'll get into some other stuff later. <laughs> Bless you. See you. Come on, sis. Yeah. Hi, my name is Tabitha. Uh -huh. uh, I have a problem with the uh, spine. Uh -huh. Higher spine is kind of crook, uh -huh. so it's hard to sleep uh -huh. at night time, long time. So uh, by face, 80%. Uh -huh. So I came out. I well, you, you sit on the other side of Heidi. Uh, okay. Yeah, and you sit. I realized bladder, so I, Lord want me to pray, so I pray. And when I came, my toe was uh, damaged by, you know, a long time hiking down. So toe is 100%. Toe is 100%. How long had you had a problem with your toe? Oh, about six months. Six months. So go sit beside Heidi. Hi, I'm Janice. Uh, I don't have a big sickness, but I had a cold yesterday. Uh -huh. So my body got really hot today. Yeah. So I thought, okay, so I wake up. Well, that's, I think my heat is going down. Mm -hmm. And same time, my uh, elbows are really tingling. Mm -hmm. I'm left-handed. Yes. So I think it's uh, something's going on. The Lord's doing something there. I decree your healing. You. Amen. Bless you. Come closer. Come closer. Yes, sir. Uh, my name's Wing, W-I-N-G. Uh -huh. um, I work... Um, in front of the computer, uh, six to eight hours a day, and, yeah. and, and uh, using the mouse and a trackball, yeah. it's been impacting my uh, f form or uh, shoulder area. Yeah. Mm. So this past week, uh, 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 it was so painful at night. Uh, uh, kept tossing and turning, and uh, I couldn't uh, raise raise my arm. Yeah. Uh, above shoulder level yeah. for some reason. Yeah. Uh, so when I came here, I forgot about it, but yeah. uh, before the prayer, the pain level was about eight and a half. Yes. Uh, after prayer, about well, under 20. Yes. What can you do now? You're good. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Bless you. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise for that. Now, I'm not going to want to hold you too long because it's Thursday. Um, but who had the medal? Who raised your hands and you had medal? Uh, stand up. Stand up if you had medal. Stand up if, you, if you're here and you had medal. So we got one, two, three. Shout out, where is your medal? Uh, left knee, right knee. Does it cause discomfort? Okay. I want you to sit in that chair. And then you have metal? Does it discomfort? No? She does? Do you want me to pray for you? 
Uh, does she speak another language? Well, then you got to come. You got to help me. Because I don't do Russian. Wish I did. And this sister right here. Yeah. I was in San Antonio. I ministered to a guy who had broken 25 bones. He had three plates, um, 19 screws. He was taking Oxycontin. And obviously he had limited mobility because he had broken his. And so God removed all three plates, removed all 19 screws. He had perfect mo mobility and could do everything. So um, I used to do this a whole lot more than I do it now, but I would have people literally bring me their x-rays. <laughs> literally bring me their x-rays. And um, when I talk about this miracle, I see two things. I see the metal becomes bone. I mean, we have those cases. And then we have the cases where it stays metal, but it acts like bone, but it doesn't hurt. So in other words, um, like for example, I had, a, I had a, a woman, she had metal from here to here. And so she was in pain. She said, the metal's still there, but the pain's gone, and she was able to do this. A man walks out of the congregation and says, that's a miracle. I said, really? How do you know? He says, because I'm a doctor, and that's my patient, and it's impossible for her to do this. But she could still feel the metal. She could still feel it, but it acted just like bone. You know, I had a case of a guy, his, his knee was metal, but the pain was gone. He did an x-ray, it was still metal, but it acted just like bone. So I had another case. Uh, a woman had uh, metal from here to here under doctor's care. Doctor checked her. The metal was bone. So I mean, I've seen both. I don't really care what happens. <laughs> Just as long as the pain is gone, you can move good. So uh, you have pain? A little bit. Okay. Yeah, well... We should pray for you. And then we're going to let you guys go. Got to pray for her. Uh, Russian or Ukrainian or Russian? Ukrainian? Okay. It's, it's so similar. Yes. And she has metal. You said? So one valve is metallic and the other valve has a ring on it. Metallic okay. ring. Yeah. And with discomfort? Yes. Um... Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Um, have her stand here. You have to interpret my prayer. I will pray slow. I will pray, I will pray in English. And then you ask her when she feels like the pain is decreasing and then when it's gone I, after the prayer. Y'all stretch forth y'all's hands and let's pray for her. Holy Father, in the name of Jesus, touch my sister right now. Lord, give her a miracle. Take all the pain away. I speak a miracle into her body. I command all pain to disappear. I command this heart to work perfectly. In the name of the Lord Jesus right now. Ask her to let you know when she feels pain decreasing.
It's calming down a little bit. Yes. Tell her Jesus is healing her now. It feels like she's just today. Repeat after me, brother. I command this metal to disappear. And I command brand new flesh to take its place. Ask her what's happening now. She came down a little bit, just mm -hmm. a little bit more. Okay. She said it's come down a couple of times. Let's pray one more time. Pray in the spirit for her. Tell her, she says it's getting better. Stay with it. She said, it's getting easier to breathe. She's smiling. <laughs> Have her go ahead and praise him in her language. Y'all go ahead and praise him for a minute. Uh, is this pain all gone? Ask her. She's not hearing her heart uh, sounding like metal. Say that out loud so they can She's hear. not hearing her heart sound like metal anymore. <laughs> okay, well, you, you guys want to let us in on that? I don't know. I, I was like, I don't know how it's supposed to feel. <laughs> okay, that's what you said. But she said it doesn't feel like metal anymore. Yeah, when it pumps. Yeah. When it pumps. Amen. Okay, well, let's pray for her. Um, I'm, I'm going to share this with you. Um, I was in Cal tell her I was in California. I prayed for a Spanish man. Yeah, um, he was overweight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He supernaturally lost 45 pounds. 
Свет был потерял 45 пандов. He has sugar diabetes. And it disappeared. He sent me the test. And the sugar diabetes was gone. Now here's the real point. He had hepatitis C. And it disappeared and he sent me the test that it was negative. Are you ready? Okay, you should stand behind her now, but interpret. Close your eyes. Say it to her. In the name of Jesus, I curse this disease. I command it to disappear from her body. I command brand new blood. And when they check her, let them find nothing. No hepatitis C any longer. I command it to disappear 100%. And I speak a total miracle into her body. In Jesus' name. Amen. Where are we at? Go ahead. She, well, I had a, a total. Speak loud so they can hear you. I have a total knee replacement in yes. July. Yes. And uh, it wouldn't uh, cooperate very well, so I had to have it. There's so much scar tissue. Yes. They had to um, manipulate it again, so I had to, they put me out and broke the scar tissue. Yes. So I have to continually to exercise it daily in order to keep the scar tissue from forming. Okay. And so it's, it's real stiff and swollen all the time. It's always swollen and it's always stiff. Okay. But I can move it, but I just can't put it, you know, uh, under me. Can't put me. any weight on it? No, no pressure on it? No, I can put weight on it. But you can't do what? I can't bend it very tight. Okay. You know? So, yeah. Okay. Um... May I have permission to put my hand on your knee? Are you guys going to pray for her? Yes. Oh, you don't get to pray. Whenever you can get a man to work, enjoy the moment. It won't last that long, baby. Lord, give her a miracle of healing in this knee. Remove all the scar tissue. Restore her mobility 100%. I decree and declare a Yale May I healing. Let it progressively get better and better until it's completely well. Lord, let all the swelling go down and stay gone. And Lord, turn this thing back as if it never happened. Did they put a foreign substance in here? What is it? It's a total replacement. What is the substance? It's a metal. Okay. Okay, metal and plastic. Okay. I command this metal and this plastic to act just like bone in Jesus name now do you have discomfort now just a little okay. about a three okay that's what I wanted to gauge now don't do anything, okay? Okay. Lord, let the reason for the discomfort disappear permanently. And I don't 
want you to do anything, okay? This is going to be progressive. Let's see how you are tomorrow. Okay? Because later on we'll talk about, you're going to be back tomorrow. Because we'll get into more miracles tomorrow. Today is just an introduction because we wanted to cover a whole lot of different areas. Not just physical healing, but help people get closer to the Father and to Jesus. All right, let me help you up. Come on, darling. All right, you can go back to your seat. All right, uh, do I have any doctors here? Do I have any nurses? Any nurses, RNs? Good, RN, come up. I need, I need curvature of the spine. Um, my first sister, yeah, come. I want you to bend over. No, no, stand, stand, and bend over. Bend over. She's going to find your curvature. Your, your job is to find the curvature. Before we pray, and then we're going to pray, and then we'll do the afterward. You got it? Where is it at? Right here? Two herniated discs. Okay. Good enough. Sit right here. Sit right chair, woman. Hold my No, I need you. Yeah, here. Hold my mic. Push your butt to the back. Let me have them legs. Push your butt to the back. There you go. Yeah, there we go. Discomfort, yes? Okay. You ready? All right. How long have you had um, um, scoliosis? Since high school. Now I'm 41. No, you ain't. You're 39 a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> and in basketball, I hurt my back playing basketball when I was in um, high school. My okay. Senior year. Was you any good? Yeah, we shooting guard. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. Back in the day when I was small, <laughs> I was a shooter too, yeah, leading scorer. Shooter. Yeah, girl. Yeah. I talk That's about funny. you while I, you know, <laughs> while I swished you. Yeah. <laughs> he it's a black. It was a black thing, you know, <laughs> to talk about people. While. <laughs> okay, now it's starting. Lord, I'm praying for her L4, L5. Let her have new one. S what? Yeah. S1. Let her have a brand new one. Let the pain and the reason for the pain go away. Um, I'm going to pray for your spine to go into place. You okay with that? Yes. Okay. So... When you feel it moving, let me know, okay? Let every disc be healed, Jesus, and let this spine go into place and let it be healed. And Lord, let us go forth. I got saved, didn't care no more. <laughs> got called the fool. Let me know when you feel pain decreasing. Yeah, I need soft hands. Sometimes when I'm praying for people, they'll feel like a tingling or a heat or a cooling sensation, like a numbing sensation, like God kind of sees. I speak to the spine, go into place now in Jesus' name. Let me just mention this in passing. 
if you look at the um, order in which the fruit of the Spirit are listed, and if you look at the order in which the gifts of the Spirit are listed, patience corresponds to healing. Just saying. <laughs> now, 10 being the level of discomfort before prayer and zero being none, where would you put it on the continuum? Do you have to move around to see what well, then girl move? <laughs> pain. Less pain, quantify it for me because I'm a statistics person. I do numbers. So 60% better? Okay, well, we're getting there. You you right handed or left handed? Okay. What was your uh, what was your shooting range? Fifteen, twenty, twenty five. She can be here while I'm having this conversation with her. <laughs> Don't be tripping. I could talk about cornbread and buttermilk, and God can still heal people. Cause sometimes people need to be distracted to get healed, cause they trying so hard to get healed. Mmm, cornbread and buttermilk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the African American people went to the Baptist church. Y'all really understand me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see, see. <laughs> you know, because you you know you're supposed to preach and then you're supposed to kind of sing your message toward the end. I'm too tired for all that. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for touching and healing our sister. All right, let's check again. Stand up and move around. Let's see where we're at. <laughs> You can twist more. Okay, and give me some numbers. You're like a three? This one up here was mm -hmm. up here, up here was pinched right here. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't do this. You couldn't do that. So you're like 70% better. Okay. Well, right there. Okay. Well, I'm not putting my hand there, baby. We, we got the Me Too movement going on. <laughs> I know you meant nothing, okay? I know you're pure in it. But, you know, but people, they be tripping. They be tripping. People be tripping. I can't believe he did that. And it'll be on Facebook. <laughs> With commentary. <laughs> so, so, Holy Father, you got an angel. Let the angel put the hand there. <laughs> Complete the healing process. And Lord, just adjust her spine. In Jesus' name. Now come over here and stand. Where's my nurse? Now I want you, I want you to bend over for my nurse. And, and nurse, give us an honest report. Bend over, darling. Bend over because this is, nurses can do it better like that. She's doing pretty good. As definitely as 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 improved. You can see it from the side that this was much more protruding right here. Yeah. And this was much more dipping right here. Right. Yeah. No, I from the side I could see that right here where where you're pointing out. So what do you feel? It definitely went down. It's definitely in line, and it's there's it's not sticking out anymore. It's not bulging at all. Awesome. Come on up. Now. Um, do that twist thing where you, you know, you know how you 
But you lift it. There you go, because that's where you felt the twinge. Quantify. A one. Well, then we should pray one. We should pray one more time. Now you know if I wasn't busy, and if they had a court somewhere, I'd show you how to really. I'd show you how to really shoot. No, no, let me pray for you. Let me pray. She would probably, you know, swish all over. But, you know, I might have a few anointed shots. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, you know, you can be anointed to make a swish. <laughs> so, Father, you've hit her 90%. I know, Lord, it's been a weird swishy night. But, Lord, you got a sense of humor. And Lord, I thank you for touching my sister. Yale, may I bring her healing to 100%. Let your light fix everything in her body. God, for your glory. In Jesus' name. It was a pleasure talking basketball with you. you. Let me have my other sister. My nurse don't leave me because you got to check her. Yeah, well, you know... Uh, you should bend over and eat. let's check her. We're going to be done after this because y'all need to go to bed. A little curve here. A little curve right there. You're good there. Yeah, yeah you're not curved up here. We're going to do what? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I get to participate in that, right? Yeah. No, I'm going to go up there and hang out with y'all for a little bit, and then I'm going to bring some food. It doesn't feel curved at all. A little bit right there? Okay, well, sit right here. Let me pray for you. Come on, nursey. Mm -hmm. Let I'm me on, have it. On, Push your butt to the back. No, keep your shoes on. It's easier for me. Yeah, keep them on. Lift, lift them up for me. Push your butt to the back. Butt all the way to the back. There you go. Yeah, you're a little bit. Okay, straighten them. Yeah, so I can actually see good. Okay, this is good. You ready? So, Father, I want you to cause this curvature to disappear. Okay, you demon power attacking the spine out of the body now. I command the spine to go into place. And Lord, let her be able to breathe, let her chest feel really good. Okay, little sister, stand up for me. And would you check her for me again, please? Yes. If you'll bend over for us. This way's going a little bit to the right. Just a little bit. Yeah. Is it still the same, or have, do we have some improvement? Oh, it's definitely improved. It's improved. Up Nothing up there. There was something up there before. Before, yes. Now I just feel it go a little bit this way. Right there. Okay. So let me. You can stand up, sis. Put your hand there for me, darling. Very good. Okay. Jesus, touch her right now. Finish this. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, let's check it one more time and give me your honest yeah, profession. Yeah, I, I felt it move when you were praying. You felt it yeah, move? when you were praying, yeah. Okay, check or for me. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. if you'll bend down, yeah. bend down. Yeah, I just, I like to have, yeah. It's perfect, wonderful. Praise the Lord. Bless you, yes. Let's give the Lord praise on that. All right. Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, listen, it's 10 o'clock and it's late and you need to go to bed, but don't leave me yet. Let's give Pastor a hand clap as he comes. He can dismiss us. Thank you so much. Excellent. Excellent. Love you too. Love you too. Well, hey, we'll be back uh, in the morning at 10 a.m. Uh, Tony's going to be bringing it uh, in the morning. Um, and so have a good night in the light. Amen? Amen. All right. Hey, God bless.